often people ask us questions about how long we've been here in this particular area, and I think that that's not really that important to answer because you know our people have been here for countless generations. We describe ourselves as having been here since time immemorial. We refer to ourselves as the Quidditch Cha'at, but we're also known as the Makah tribe. And um, you know, our parents and grandparents and so many generations back, of course, have um, thrived in this area. We have been here for a great length of time and, of course, are interested in maintaining this beautiful place for generations to come. My name is Janine Ledford, and I am a member of the Makah Indian tribe. We are situated here at the very northwest tip of Washington state on the Olympic Peninsula. Um, again, we refer to ourselves as the Quidditch Cha'at, which means people of the Cape, people of the Cape area. I am a mother of four children. I have two older kids um, out of high school and two kids still in school. I'm the executive director at the Macaw Cultural and Research Center a position I've held for some time now, since 1995. Um, I'm also a member of the school board. We have a public school here on reservation, so I'm the chairperson of the Cape Flattery School District Board. Um, I'm on the tribe's higher education committee as well, and then serve on some other boards out, outside of our community. And um, so I work here at the Macaw Cultural and Research Center, and we actually have certified language teachers that go into our public school that we have here in Nia Bay. So on our reservation, we have a state school and we have a really good working relationship with the school. And um, the bulk of the kids, of course, are Macaw. And so we have language classes available for kids. Uh, all kids take Macaw language K through eighth grade, and then they can also take it in the high school um, as an elective. So it's wonderful that the kids have an opportunity to, to learn not just about language, but about history and culture. They learn about traditional resources and you know, foods. And um, so it's really great when, that our young people have, have that opportunity to have education that's relevant to their own, you know, to their own tribal um, background. Yeah, our students here do fairly well. Um, we have, um, when we compare our test scores to other school schools within the state and the nation, we, we do quite well. And we saw a rise in test scores as we saw increased language learning. So we do think that that's not a coincidence that the, you know, if you teach kids more than one language, it's good, you know, it's good for them. And it also, of course, of course, helps strengthen their identity as young Macaw people. Um, it helps build confidence. And um, so I think that that's something that makes sense to incorporate cultural education into their overall education. I think we have a long history here in our tribe of um, valuing both formal and, and informal education. We've had a school here in our community since 1934. So we were um, not subject to boarding schools for as many generations as some other indigenous people, and I think that's a really good thing. Um, so we, you know, we do what we can do to make sure that that kids in our tribe have a, a real strong sense of knowing, you know, who they are, where they're, you know, where they come from, and um, it helps make decisions, of course, about their their futures as well. We often, almost always have a 100% graduation rate. Our school is fairly small. We're able to work closely with the students that might have, you know, have some struggles and their families really support education. You know, so many people here seem to understand that education is, is an important tool. And um, so we're, we're proud of that. You often hear statistics about Native American students and they're not very encouraging necessarily, but our story is you know is inspiring we we think and we're really proud of our students many of them go off to college many of them come back some of them of course make their way elsewhere but we have um, some years where almost all of our students 
are accepted into um, junior colleges or four-year universities. Um, so they they tend to make plans, and you know our community works works with them to help them you know reach their goals. Um, I think it's hard to describe what being macaw means to me because it's been who I am my whole life. Um, you know, I'm a macaw woman. I also have non-macaw blood as well. So I think there's, you know, I can work within any number, you know, of worlds. Um, that didn't sound quite right, but <laughs> anyway, I, you know, being macaw is, is you know, who I am. Um, it's something that just, you know, during, during your formative years, I guess, you figure out who you are and um, it's always been an important part of my identity. Um, my kids are macaw and they, you know, there's so many important values that I think we try to teach to our children, you know, not just the visible, obvious stuff, but just how we treat each other, how we relate to each other, how we support each other, the, you know, the foods that we nourish our bodies with, the, you know, occupations that we choose. So it's just wrapped up, you know, we're, it's just wrapped up in who we are, I guess. So yeah, sometimes I stumble and fumble, and that's okay. I'm sure there's a couple, <laughs> a few, a few parts of that that are useful. Let's hope. <laughs>